guys, I am filming this on my iPhone, so I'm hoping that it's going to be okay. This is for my book reviews for the last few months. I'm sort of combining May, April, and March together. I also want to mention, firstly, that I have a Goodreads account now. Thanks for one of my viewers for telling me about the site. I'll put the link to below to my site as well as put my username right here so you guys can follow me and please let me know if you have an account and then I can follow you. Uh, it's a great place to see what I'm reading at the moment, kind of see um, reviews as I'm reading, where I'm at in the book, as well as review short summaries of what I thought about the books um, before I get to film them for this channel. Also, um, if you want to ever go back and see what I have read in the past or if you remember something that I've talked about and you just want to get info on it, you can definitely go to Goodreads and all the books I've been reading the last uh, for, since the beginning of the year are on there. You can follow me on my 55 books for 2012 challenge and yeah, great thing. So check out goodreads.com. I'm going to talk about the books now. I'm going to start off with Labyrinth. I mentioned it in my March favorites video so I'm going to link that here so you can watch the review in full there. But basically it's a book that goes into how the LAPD is connected not only to Suge Knight and Death Row Records, but how they're also connected, all of them, to the deaths of Biggie Smalls and uh, Tupac Shakur. It goes into the LAPD police scandal with all the corruption that was in the agency. Um, some of their police officers were, you know, committed murders for money. They robbed banks. They they lost evidence, they destroyed evidence, they planted evidence, a lot of stuff that was very, very shady that was going on um, right around the time of uh, both these rappers' deaths, it was right after the LA riots, the O.J. Simpson trials, so there's a lot of um, scrutiny against the police and so a lot of this stuff went unchecked because they didn't want the public to find out about it. And it's really, really well written. Um, Randall Sullivan, who is the reporter who wrote this, writes it in a way that's really easy to follow. You can't put it down. You want to know everything that happened. And um, the detective that is investigating all of these issues, um, his name is Russell Poole. You feel for him so much because nobody, nobody wants to listen to him. Nobody wants him to be doing his job. Everyone wants him to just forget what he's doing and just pretend like it's not happening. And he's trying to get out what he's figured out. Um, which is why you'll never see um, a result to who killed Tupac and who killed Biggie, because the evidence is just gone, the people who killed it have been killed or dead or will never be prosecuted. And so this book is really the only justice that they're going to see. It's an incredible book. All of it is, of course, alleged. I mean, none of these people or the majority of these people haven't been tried for their crimes, but um, really eye-opening, not only to the LAPD and the hip-hop world, but also if you just like culture or crime novels or anything about um, injustices, um, it's really, really, really interesting. I think it's a must-read, um, one of the best books I've ever read. So I have two books from the Mer Wolves of Mercy Falls series. Now, I mentioned uh, the first book, which is called Shiver, in another one of my reviews. I'll try to find it and link it below. But Shiver, basically, it's about a girl and a boy. The boy is a wolf. He changes into a wolf when it's cold and when it's summer he's a boy and the girl was bitten by these wolves but never changed because she was left in a car um, in the hot weather by her father and they believe that that repressed the change in her and so she feels this connection to the wolves she ends up falling in love with the boy and that's what Shiver is basically about trying to keep him from um, changing back into a wolf because wolves only have a certain number of years where they can change back and then they just become a wolf permanently and so he doesn't become a wolf permanently they're trying to figure out a way to keep him human and that's what Shiver's all about then um, Linger and Forever are basically the second and third books of the series honestly I'm not a huge fan of their love the the two main characters Grace and Sam I, I don't really like Grace I don't really like her character I don't feel for her my favorite um, characters in this are definitely Cole and um, Isabel. They are my favorite characters and they are heavily in book two and three so I actually enjoyed that part of it the most. Um, their relationship is really cool. The way that Cole interacts with Isabel and what he brings out in her. Also the way that Cole interacts with Sam. They're very very different people. There are two people that were both bitten by Beck to take over the pack and but had very different reactions and, and different wants in becoming a wolf and different relationships with Beck and I really love their interactions together and Cole's a great character he's this rock star who just is so jaded he doesn't want to live anymore he's 
into drugs, he wants, he's thinking about suicide, and he decides to become a wolf as an escape to get rid of that life that he had. Um, so his character is really, really interesting, and he's also kind of a science genius. To be honest, I love Linger the best, the second book, and it made me want to read this one so badly. When I got to Forever, I felt like, again, like in the first book, parts of the plot, she just sort of like rushed it or added things to make stuff work that I wanted more. Like, I wanted more in how they figured things out. I wanted more interaction with the wolf pack. There were barely ever any interaction with the wolf pack in these two books. And I feel like she could have created such a more full and fulfilling to read story if she just wrote more. Another sort of young book is uh, Sailor Moon 2. They're mangas, so they're like comics, uh, Asian comics. You read them backwards, you read them not this way but this way, and they're also read opposite on the page as well. So kind of something to get used to when you're reading it, but I love Sailor Moon. I was a huge, huge, huge fan when I was in elementary school. I watched every single episode of the anime. So these really follow the anime closely. There's a few changes. It's not as um, extensive as the anime. I think the anime they made like Serena has Sailor Moon a lot more of like a baby. In the book, she's less like that. She also has like, there's different names for everybody. Um, but a lot of the stories you might recognize. And I just love the artwork and, and they just came out in English um, for the first time. So I have the first four books. Um, and this is number two, which is the Sailor Mercury. If you liked Sailor Moon as a kid, you might want to pick those up. Or if you're into anime, it's, it's a really fun story um, about a group of girls who discover that they were once princesses in this moon kingdom and they have to stop the world from being taken over by these evil people that are stealing energy. Some of them are better at being heroes than others. There's also like a love affair in it as well. Uh, Last Chance Saloon is one of Marion Key's books. It's one of my favorites of hers. Um, if you're at Being Rachel's Holiday, this is number two. Great, great book, amazing beach read. It's quite big, but you get through it. Um, it follows three friends, Tara, Catherine, and Fenton. Um, they meet as kids in Ireland, and then they move to London, and they're kind of in their early 30s at this point. Um, Fenton is gay. He has a, in a, he's in a gay relationship. Um, he's in the fashion industry. Um, Tara is sort of in this relationship with kind of a deadbeat who doesn't really appreciate her. And then Catherine is like permanently single, uh, career girl. And basically what happens is um, Fenton gets sick and he asks them all to do something for him as he's in the hospital um, to sort of face their fears. So he asks Tara to leave her boyfriend because he doesn't treat her well. And her biggest fear is that she's not going to find anyone. She feels like she's too old. She's in the last chance saloon to meet someone new. So she doesn't want to leave the guy that she's with. She doesn't think there's anything else out there. She's terrified of being alone. Um, so he's asking her to leave him. And then for Catherine, he's asking her to stop being the Ice Queen and find a relationship that isn't per like totally set out to fail in the beginning because Catherine tends to date young model types who aren't into serious relationships and she knows that she doesn't have anything in common with them. So he asks her to date this guy at work that she's into. And she's terrified of intimacy and letting people close to her because she was burned as a kid, as a young uh, woman by someone. And, the, and Fenton and Tara have no idea what happened to her at this point because she wasn't living with them at the time, but they know that something bad happened to her. And so throughout the book, you, you go into the three of, them, three of their lives, and Fenton's also fa facing his illness and like the fact that he might not live and the fact that he is sick because he's trying to avoid going to the doctor and all those things. So throughout the novel, um, you see them all coming to terms with their fears, and it's a really empowering book. It's a very funny book at times. It's a very like sad book at times. It deals with sickness and death and um, you know that whole thing that people feel in the early 30s of like, what am I doing in my life? Whether it's in relationships or in their job or what have you. That kind of feeling like, is it too late to start over? And, you know, do I take these chances? It's a really good book. I read A Cinnamon Roll Murder, which I've been waiting for like crazy. I'm a huge fan of Joanne Fluke. She writes culinary mysteries all about this girl, Hannah, who has a cookie shop in the small um, Minnesota town. And uh, this one is about uh, a jazz festival that's happening in town, and one of the singers um, is murdered, and she kind of has to figure out what happened. Um, the issue I have with this book, because it's not one of Joanne's best, is that there's a love triangle that happens in the storyline of all of her novels. It's between Hannah, 
um, and her two loves. One is Norman, he's the town dentist, and one is Mike, he's the town sheriff. They both like her, they both date her, but she can't choose which one, and so their relationships are very stagnant. Like, she doesn't sleep with any of them. Like, this is a girl who's in her early 30s, and she doesn't, like, have an intimate relationship with these two men that she's been dating for a really, really long time, and I just find that a little bit unrealistic. Maybe not for everybody, like, maybe um, some people out there are a little bit more um, prudent about things, but for me, I think if you're that, at that age and you've been dating someone for, like, years, you pr or at least, I think, I mean, there's probably about 10 books, so I'm assuming that's been years, um, you think that you would take that next step, but she has it, and so the, the books are getting a little bit stagnant, because she can't choose, and she doesn't want to take that step unless she chooses, and the book before this, um, there's a huge cliffhanger, which kind of seems like the choice is made for her, and she has to move forward, and yet, once we start reading this book, it sort of, like, disappears, and it's back to the same old, same old, so I was expecting, like, change and answers, and I was really let down by it, and a lot of the whole, um, the town charm isn't in this book either. Like, all the fun people that live in the town, it's kind of like Stars Hollow, Gilmore Girls vibe, with all the weird characters. You don't see a lot of them in this book either. So, there's great recipes. The story is okay. I kind of guessed what was going to happen quite early on. Um, but I was really just let down about the whole, like, love triangle thing. And honestly, if she doesn't pick a guy freaking soon, I'm going to stop reading the books, which sucks because I, I've enjoyed this series very, very much. The Serialist is another book I read by David Gordon, and this is a very strange book for me because it's quite graphic. Uh, it's about a serial killer, very sexual, like cuts up the bodies, really graphic at points. But it's mostly about this guy, Harry Blotch, and I'm just looking at the, the back because I read these a while ago now, I can't remember everyone's names. But he's a writer of pulp fiction, so he writes like a, a vampire series, he writes like a sci-fi series, he writes for porn magazines, he does all of these different kinds of writing um, under uh, other people's names. And he's contacted by a serial killer that's in jail to write his love story, and he feels like finally I'll get to write a story under my own name that people will take seriously. Because he feels like no one takes him seriously as a writer because he writes these books that are sort of on the fringes, they're not considered great literary novels. Um, and there's the whole mystery because then um, people start turning up dead that uh, have connections to the serial killer and they're killed in the same way that he kills. So there's all these questions about whether or not he should be killed on death row or not because he maybe it's the wrong person, blah, blah, blah. So he's kind of drawn into figuring out what happened as well as um, <clears throat> writing this book at the same time. And there's a little bit of love affair. Um, he has this relationship with his manager, who's actually like in high school, she's like a prep schooler, he tutors her, and he ended up, um, she became his manager, and they have a very interesting relationship, it's very innocent, it's sort of like, if you see the movie Leon, Matilda, and Leon's relationship, how there's sort of like, she's kind of in love with him, but he sees her more as like a kid, and like a, a, a family member, and, but there's just this chemistry between them that's magical. That's really cool about this book as well. Uh, what I loved about it, though, is just the thought about writing and what consists, what do you consider good writing and why, um, why, if you write serial kind of books, are you considered not a good writer? I mean, I love Charlene Harris, I love Joanne Fluke, I love all of these writers that write stuff like this. It's enjoyable, it's interesting. Um, the Suki Stackhouse books by Charlene Harris, I mean, I consider them great writers because they create these worlds that I want to be in. And I really... Uh, loved those uh, ideas that were brought up in this book. Um, I strongly believe that, like how much I love like Supernatural. I think the acting in that show is amazing and you're okay, it's not going to win an Oscar or an Emmy, but you know what? It, they, those characters, they live it, they breathe it, they make you want to know them, they make you want to hang out with them, they make you want to go into that world, and I think that is what makes great acting, great writing, great TV shows, great books, it's more the connection you have to them. And that's what he talks about in here and uh, why certain people are so drawn to those types of books. And it's a lot to do with like people that are very imaginative and have this sort of uh, desire to live in different lives. And if you're, as a kid, had a lot of daydreams and things like that, you're more drawn to these things. And I really connected with that in the book. So I, I want to say I loved it, but at the same time, parts of it were really graphic that I was kind of like, oh my God, what am I reading? Um, 
so it's hard to say. I got a lot out of it, and it was a book that made me think. So I think definitely if you can handle the gore and um, are interested in any of those things I mentioned, pick it up. It's, it's a really different and cool book. Lastly, I just mentioned these guys in my favorite, so I'll link that here so you can hear more reviews, but Just Kids by Patti Smith and Black Cherry Blues by James Lee Burke. Uh, a viewer recommended this to me and uh, to get into the series it's a lot about Louisiana and the voice of it is really strong. And I have to say, I wasn't really drawn into the storyline of this book. It's his third book in the series of the Dave Robichaux novels. Um, I didn't really like a lot of the secondary characters. It was very manly, like men focused, I felt like, but the writing and the way he describes the areas, the way he describes the characters, the flow of the story is freaking incredible. He's an amazing writer. And um, the actual character of Dave and his little daughter, I loved. And I definitely would read more and more of these books, even though I didn't even really like the story. I would read more because that's how great the writing was and how great the character is. And I bought a bunch of other books from the series. So thank you for the recommendation. I uh, have a new fan in James Lee Burke, and he's still writing right now this series. Just Kids is a memoir. It was written by Patti Smith. It's all about her life in New York City in the late 60s, early 70s, when she left home to become an artist. And she meets this guy. His name is Robert um, Maplethorpe, and he's a photographer, artist. Well, he starts off being an artist, and he becomes a photographer over the course of the book. And Patti starts off as an artist, poet, and becomes a musician over the course of the book. But it's all about their relationship together and the trials that they go through and they met on the street one day and he ends up taking her home and giving her some place to stay. She has no place to stay. Um, they end up becoming uh, romantically involved. They live together. They try to get by with very, very little money. You know, often they don't have, have to choose between food or art supplies or rent. They share like one meal a day. They're really struggling. Um, they end up going to the Chelsea Hotel and living there with all the great artists. She has encounters with Allen Ginsberg, Bob Dylan, the band, Janis Joplin, Jenny Hendrix. The list goes on and on, the amount of culture that you see in this book. It's just so wonderful to read about all these famous people that you kind of look up to. And I'm a huge fan of the Chelsea, and um, I love Factory Girl, Edie Sedgwick, all of that stuff. So I was really, really into this book. All about how difficult it can be for artists, and she really does it. Like, she went there with nothing and just like made it work and I find that so inspiring because I don't think I could live in squalor not knowing where when I'm gonna next eat or where I'm gonna sleep and she made it work she made it happen I mean there are days she says they're covered in lice and she went off to Paris and like slept on like disgusting mattresses and just because that's how she, what she could afford and she wanted to live and she wanted to experience it um, it's really really cool the love affair of them is so beautiful because it's more about a really strong connection and friendship of two minds that are very similar. Because actually Robert ends up becoming a homosexual later on in the book and their relationship is um, strained, obviously. It's not as romantic anymore, although they still kind of get together a little bit. Um, she ends up dating other people, blah, 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 but they still, be, they still stay very good friends and confidants and supporters of each other. Um, and they definitely push each other. And, this is a love affair, this is kind of a love letter to that relationship. He asked her to write about their story, and she did in this book, and it's beautifully written. She has an incredible lyrical voice. Um, I put it down often throughout the month. I read this one at the same time I was reading this one, and um, every time I went back to it, I'm like, why did I put this down? It's so good, and I went back to reading it. I loved, loved, loved it, and highly recommend this guy. Uh, okay, that's the end of my book review uh, of the last few months. I have a bunch of Supernatural books as well, but I'm going to do a separate review on those and talk a little bit about the Supernatural book series separately. It's not everyone's taste, and there's quite a few books that I read in it, so I don't want to bore you guys all with that if you're not interested. So I'll do a, d a separate video about that later, but until then, I'll see you guys soon, and let me know what you're reading. Okay, bye!